role of journalism is to be a, a, a chronicler of daily life. Journalism is about defining uh, the context of the times. It's about providing people with information so that they can make independent decisions. It's about holding people accountable for what they do. Part of our job is to speak truth to power, to be a voice for people that don't have a voice, to look out for the interests of people who maybe don't have all the institutions of society on their side. But I think it's more than that. I look at our job as being there to create a kind of civic vocabulary. Newspapers are the place where the whole world comes together. It's important that thousands of other people are also reading that same newspaper. So there can be a common vocabulary and a cohesion in a community. Really no other institution can bring that form of connection to a community other than a newspaper. In every city in this country, it is in newspaper newsrooms that the bulk of the reporting, especially locally, goes on. Typically, the daily newspaper has more people writing and editing than all the electronic media combined. The way information is delivered will inevitably change. New platforms, new technology, but the fundamental values, the fundamentals of what makes journalism important will remain the same. The commitments of the journalists, the commitment they have to their quality, their work, it's what makes this company tick. It always has, it always will. publishing companies inking a multi-billion dollar deal. McClatchy has won the bidding war for Knight Ritter, paying four and a half The deal is a quantum leap for the 150-year-old Sacramento-based McClatchy. To create the second president. biggest newspaper chain in the U.S. behind... March 13, 2006. In a stunning move, the McClatchy Company emerges as the second largest newspaper publishing company in the United States. Already a highly respected innovator in the industry, the company strategically positions itself for the future in some of the nation's top growth markets. In the American newspaper industry now, if you ask knowledgeable people, what is a company that in the last 20 years has demonstrated a determination to improve its newspapers across the board, in journalism, in business management, and when it came along in technology, name a company like that. McClatchy would be right at the top of everybody's list. How did it happen? How did a once small, family-controlled, regional media company emerge as a national leader? It began 150 years ago with the vision of one man. My uh, great-grandfather, James McClatchy, uh, had worked in, in New York for Horace Greeley uh, of the Tribune. And uh, he is one of the people who literally was working for Horace Greeley. When Horace Greeley said, go west, young man, go west, uh, my great-grandfather actually went west. It is such a classic American story. Here's a guy who comes to the country essentially with nothing, an orphan, um, makes his way in New York City, the great melting pot of America, hears Horace Greeley say, go west, young man, and does and winds up founding what has become a very lasting, durable, uh, important company. In 1857, James McClatchy, an Irish immigrant, became the founding editor of a new newspaper at the crossroads of the California Gold Rush. He was actually in the gold fields for about seven weeks and at some point said, you know, this is way more work than I thought it was going to be. And like many journalists who would you know, rather watch other people work and write about it, uh, he decided that, that was enough of that, so he came to Sacramento. He fumbles around until he decides he's going to get into the newspaper business per se, but he's in there with a lot of other people in the newspaper business. And so he doesn't start as an owner, he starts as an editor. The paper was called The Daily Bee. The name uh, for The Bee has, a, I think, a very simple origin. At least I've always been told that my 
uh, great-grandfather James picked the name because uh, the bee was a sign of industriousness, busy as a bee. It meant that, that the people who worked on the paper were going to be industrious and it was going to be uh, uh, a newspaper that also would have a sting. When you try and trace journalistic values that came from James McClatchy and are still visible in the company, I think one of the things you notice right away is the consistency. That many of the things he talked about and that he passionately espoused are still very prevalent in the company today. Fearlessness, independence, speak truth to power, don't be afraid to look out for the average man, you know, don't pick favorites, play it down the middle. It, these are all attributes that absolutely were present in the original bee and are still present throughout the company today. They were going to be a paper of permanence. Papers came and went in the first, oh, I think in the first 30 years of the bee's existence, there were 81 papers started in, in Sacramento area. Two survived, uh, the Sacramento Union and the Sacramento Bee. Uh, so the bee people were committed to having a paper that was going to be here today, tomorrow, and 10 years from now. One hundred fifty years later, the bee still rolls off the presses, still comes to life in cyberspace, and still bears the McClatchy name. My name's Kevin McClatchy. Uh, I sit on the board of directors of McClatchy Newspapers, and I'm part of the fifth generation. My name is Brown Maloney, Brown McClatchy Maloney. Um, I'm a member of the fifth generation. My name is Molly Maloney Evangelisti, and I am a fifth generation McClatchy member uh, James McClatchy was my great-great-grandfather. Over the years, the McClatchy Company grew. James's sons, C.K. and Valentine, built the bee into a regionally dominant paper by the first decade of the 20th century. The company started a paper in Fresno in 1922, bought another in Modesto in 1927. James's grandson, Carlos, began building a chain of radio stations in California and Nevada in the 20s and 30s, followed by his sister, Eleanor, who added television stations in the 40s and 50s. Hello there. The McClatchys and their dedicated employees were always quick to embrace technological innovation and new media, but at the core, the passion always remained newspapers. There isn't any conflict about the goals in the basic sense of what is important to, to the members of the family who own the company. It is important that we preserve the independence of the paper and its integrity. And there has never been any effort or thought from any of the members of the family to, to uh, change that. The tradition of the family has never been uh, to, to be greedy, and there's never been any reason for them to do that. They've never uh, put money before what they really see as a family business. And, and they, it, it may sound corny in the, you know, the 21st century, but they take pride in being McClatchy's and running the McClatchy company. What was good for the public is a key issue for them. In later years, it's doing public service becomes a key issue for them. And they just adhere to those values and they were able to, in even the face of adversity, to stick with those values where others were not able to. And that's probably where their key success is. In 1978, a member of the fourth generation, C.K. McClatchy, took over as president of the McClatchy Company. Passionate about journalism, Passionate about public service and the First Amendment, C.K. McClatchy redirected the company back to the newspaper business entirely, selling off its broadcast interests. For the first time in 50 years, the company went looking to buy a newspaper. It was the beginning of the company's expansion outside of California. In 1979, McClatchy bought the Tri-City Herald in Washington and the Anchorage Daily News in Alaska. In 1986, McClatchy bought the Tacoma News Tribune. McClatchy selected each paper, each market carefully, and wasn't afraid of trading sizable short-term losses for sizable long-term gains. 
By 1988, a proven and successful acquisition formula was in place. A family made a choice to take the company public. The company went public paradoxically to maintain its independence. It went public with two classes of stock. One controlling stock held by the family that is not publicly traded, and another class that is publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. And that provides the family with liquidity without giving up control of the company. Being public has proven to be a benefit to the company in the sense that it has allowed us more flexibility to grow because we're able to use stock as currency in acquisitions that we could have never accomplished as a private company. With CK's sudden death in 1989, the McClatchy Company entered a new era. For the first time, the enterprise was led by a non-McClatchy family member. But the focus, the philosophy of the company, and its employees remained the same. The McClatchy family has done something really hard, which is to wisely find uh, two uh, consecutive CEOs who absolutely reflected their values and their care about journalism and their care about their communities. Shortly after uh, uh, Erwin Potts took over, they began looking for other papers and decided maybe to get outside of the California West Coast uh, market because the idea was you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket if there's an economic downturn on the West Coast. Uh, all the papers suffer, but if you have papers in other geographic areas, maybe some are doing well while some are not doing so well, and you can balance out. Soon the McClatchy tradition was joined with those of other important families in American journalism. The Daniels family's papers in South Carolina in 1990, the Raleigh News and Observer in 1995, and the Coles family's Minneapolis Star Tribune in 1998. By the 90s, McClatchy was no longer just a respected name in the West. It was a national company with 12 dailies, the ninth largest newspaper chain in the country, and still known for doing business in the distinctly McClatchy way. The McClatchy family cares intensely about the quality of the papers. We want quality to be the defining trait of the company. So when there's an economic downturn, we don't turn to layoffs. Other companies immediately turned to layoffs and news hole cuts. McClatchy was the only company among the uh, major newspaper companies not to have layoffs in the downturn after 9-11. Uh, uh, it was because we had a longer term perspective and we knew that what would be best for our employees would long term be best for our customers. But by the first decade of the 21st century, the world of newspapers was changing. The rise of the internet redefined the way people receive and perceive news, information, and advertising. True to its roots, the McClatchy Company was undaunted. Raleigh had a little thing going called Nando, which was one of the first newspaper internet sites. In fact, it was the most advanced internet site on the web that was newspaper-based. It later served as a model for most newspapers' websites and became the newspaper website model for most of the McClatchy papers. While stock analysts bemoaned the future of newspapers, McClatchy began building for the future. The future would be bigger than anyone imagined. Knight Ritter had the same kind of reputation that McClatchy had, that as newspaper chains, they were solid. They, they were grounded in solid journalism. We had a great deal of respect for the work Knight Ritter did. They've won 85 Pulitzer Prizes. They're one of the great journalistic companies in this country. So we felt a great deal of respect and kinship and a common culture with Knight Ritter. I viewed uh, McClatchy uh, as the company most like Knight Ritter in sort of every way, in terms of journalism and commitment to journalism, how McClatchy treated their employees, how they developed their employees, how their, their commitment to their communities. I thought it was clearly the company that was most like Knight Ritter, and, and I believe that's true today. A lot of the papers we picked up are in growth markets, which fits with the, our, our game plan as, as we try to go into those different growth markets. and. It was 
just marrying two companies that have a real passion for journalism. Boy, did those newspapers, the, the vast bulk of those newspapers, wind up in the right hands. And uh, I think you talk to the journalists in the newsrooms, uh, the people on the business side of those papers, and they, there was a real sense that if anyone was going to buy them, uh, best that it be McClatchy. And uh, so I think that's a, it's a good thing for our profession and for our industry. Today, as the McClatchy Company celebrates its 150th year, the world is vastly changed from the world in which James McClatchy began his enterprise in 1857. His paper of permanence has grown to 32 dailies across the United States, the dominant print and internet presence in each market. It is true that the media business is in transition, but we feel we can successfully navigate that transition. We feel that uh, we're in an excellent position to do so. In each of these markets, we've got the biggest newsroom, the most journalists, the biggest advertising sales staff, leading internet site, the biggest media franchise with the newspaper. It provides us with a great deal of power and strength in each of those companies. I think McClatchy is exceedingly well situated in this current environment because it really represents two things. One is a commitment to excellence in journalism. The other one is a commitment to really sensible business decisions. The leading local media company in some of the best markets in the country that are growing 50% faster than the U.S. average. So that's a combination that we feel will serve us well in the future regardless of how the technology changes. Many things have changed. One thing hasn't. Doing it the McClatchy way. When I talk to the new papers that are joining McClatchy for the first time, one of the things I tell them, all of them, is you never get in trouble in this company for doing the right thing. They shared that those common values and that common beliefs that, that James McClatchy originally started with and the fact that they've stayed true to them through the 150 years, to me, is remarkable. We're not a flashy company, we're not a go-go company, but uh, we're a company that's been here for 150 years. Those values wear well. You can't be in this business for 150 years or so without having passion, but I think that passion is what's made this company successful over the course of 150 years. 150 years, I mean, what are the odds? The role of journalism in American society is to keep democracy alive. And McClatchy has been doing that for a very long time, 150 years of keeping democracy alive. I believe the defining trait of McClatchy is quality. Quality journalism, quality products. Commitment to integrity and treating people well, together with innovation, innovation in our business, innovation in technology. It's a combination that has served the company well for 150 years and continues today and we think will continue for another 150 years.